Hello, Assalamu alaikum. This is me, Dr. Jahangir, and today I'm going to discuss a very high yield topic that is the nuclei of the hypothalamus and their uh, manifestation. Uh, well, I have made uh, a video on the thalamic nuclei uh, and their uh, manifestation in my previous video. You can uh, search that, and uh, these are very high yield and as for uh, CPSV, if CPS part first MCQs are concerned. So, uh, if the question says st stimulated, if this part of the hypothalamus is stimulated, it will produce this effect. If the question says, if that part, like for example, say later nucleus is destroyed or damaged, then it will produce this these effects. So, uh, we are having. Let's suppose we take the hypothalamus. Uh, this is this is. This is we have to make a photographic memory for that purpose. I'm going hypothalamus like this. Let's suppose this is your hypothalamus, just like a box, and we are looking from above. We are having, of course, the ventral side and the dorsal side. The first one is the lateral nucleus. So you are having this is the lateral nucleus. Then we are having the ventromedial nucleus. This is the ventral side and this is the medial side. So this is ventromedial nucleus. This later nucleus occupies the whole of the hypothalamus. This ventromedial, the interior, this portion is ventral and this is the dorsal. And this on the ventral side we are having the medial side. So ventromedial nucleus. Later nucleus occupies this whole or most of the lateral side. The ventromedial occupies this side. The interior nucleus it occupies that region. This is the interior nucleus. The posterior nucleus it occupies posterior region. The supra chiasmatic, of course, we are having the two optic narrow coming from the front. This is the left optic narrow, this is the right optic narrow. Then they combine together to form chiasma in front of the hypothalamus. And then they form optic tract. On the sides of the hypothalamus so if if we look at the side let's suppose this is the right optic this is the left optic you are having chiasma and this is your almost hypothalamus so you, you are having one nucleus over the chiasma over there this is called supra chiasmatic and one nucleus over there supra optic over the optic narrow supra optic narrow supra optic and supra chiasmatic so coming toward the the legend so if you are having the uh, lateral nucleus this is talking about this nucleus this is later now you you are making the photographic memory in order to for these mcqs to, to last longer in your mind this is the lateral nucleus when it is stimulated what will it cause when it is stimulated it, it will cause it it will cause what it will cause hunger this is the effect when the later nucleus hypothalamus is stimulated it will cause hunger and it is stimulated by ghrelin and it is inhibited by leptin so the later nucleus is later nucleus is inhibited by leptin and stimulated by ghrelin and it produces hunger when it is stimulated now when it is damaged it will cause what decrease appetite it would cause was decrease appetite so it will cause anorexia nervosa, failure to thrive, and starvation when it is destroyed. So coming toward the ventromedial nucleus, I'm making the hypothalamus again. This is the hypothalamus, and we are having the ventromedial nucleus over here. So when it is stimulated, it is stimulated by leptin, and when it is stimulated, it produces satiety. And when it is damaged, it produces what? This increase appetite hyperphagia obesity and disinhibition these two mcqs are highly repeated again and again and we are picking the wrong option again and again because we are having no concept of stimulation and legion if it is stimulated it will produce the desired effect if it is damaged it will produce the opposite effect so the interior nucleus and the posterior nucleus the interior nucleus is parasympathetic the posterior is sympathetic so the interior nucleus when it is stimulated it will cause cooling it would cause dissipation of heat it would cause what it was cause parasympathetic effect in the body it would ca cause cutaneous vasodilation and it would cause 
uh, more blood coming towards the skin and there will be heat loss there will be heat loss and it decreases the shivering and it increases the sweating so increasing the blood flow to the skin and increasing sweating sweating cause cooling when it is stimulated the posterior nucleus when it is stimulated it cause heat opposite effect it cause heat it cause production of heat so it causes shivering it causes decreased sweating it causes decreased blood flow to the skin so all and it increases the metabolic rate the parasympathetic would decrease metabolic rate and now when the damage occur to this the opposite will ha happen if the damage occur to parasympathetic what will happen we are having hyperthermia because the body cannot l lose its heat and posterior nucleus if it is damaged it causes hypothermia because you cannot produce the heat so for stim stimulation and damage so the interior nucleus is parasympathetic interior is parasympathetic posterior is sympathetic posterior is sympathetic then the suprachiasmatic nucleus about the chiasma discussed right now the chiasma is formed just uh, uh, in front of it and nucleus above the chiasma is suprachiasmatic nucleus and it controls the circadian rhythm and it receives the input from the retina the suprachiasmatic nucleus uh, when it is stimulated it would cause what it would cause a circadian rhythm but if it is destroyed it will cause sleeping insomnia the supraoptic nucleus discussed above the optic nerve we are having a nucleus there to regulate water balance if it is d d destroyed it will cause diabetes insipidus in the paraventricular nucleus on the sides of the hypothalamus let's suppose this hypothalamus we are on the sides we are having ventricle system we are having the ventricle system so if paraventricular mean on the sides of the ventricles so if those are damaged this would cause what they normally produces adh and oxytocin and carried to posterior pituitary for storage by neurophysins in the axonal connection so this is another mcq they are carried by neurophysins neurophysins so suprachiasmatic mainly does this and the paraventricular nucleus pro produce ADH and oxytocin. This is the main function of that. And when they are damaged, produces diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus. The paraventricular produces ADH and oxytocin. The supraoptic nucleus, it, it is actually uh, monitoring the osmolarity of water and then it gives message so these two nuclei the supraoptic and the paraventricular if one of them is damaged it causes diabetes insipidus it causes diabetes insipidus but what water balance you are having supra and for ADH and oxytocin we are having paraventricular the preoptic nucleus that is for thermoregulation and sexual dimorphic nucleus sexual function regulates secretion of gonadotropin function when it is damaged it will cause the Kelman syndrome Kelman syndrome Kelman syndrome and this is again lies in the interior portion of the uh, hypothalamus the arcuate nucleus again one of the nucleus of the hypothalamus uh, neuroendocrine dysregulation and it projects to the portal vessel of the infant develop regulates secretion of neuroendocrine hormone from the pituitary and contain dopaminergic neuron that inhibits prolactin and GnRH release play role in stimulating lactation so it has got a role in lactation because it contains dopaminergic neuron and dopamine dopamine is actually inhibit the prolactin and also inhibit the gnh gnrh release so a role in stimulating lactation but the most important for us was the lateral nucleus, ventral medial nucleus, anterior nucleus, posterior nucleus, suprachiasmatic nucleus, supra optic, and pre optic nucleus. So we should memorize these so that we do not uh, miss the right option in exam. And uh, uh, we should make our concept clear regarding 
the thalamus mcqs which i discussed in the previous lecture and the hypothalamic uh, nuclei and their relations because these are uh, uh, very high yield to isko isko photographic memory bana le photographic memory aur yahan pe ek aur mcq main clear karu ki dopamine kya karta hai prolactin ko inhibit karta hai to us pe ek mcq uh, do teen aate hain us pe abhi mere dimag mein sirf ek aa raha hai ya do aa rahe hain ke uh, ek hai uh, during breast feeding the pregnancy is inhibited ek ye hai during breast feeding the pregnancy is inhibited by agar increase ka puche to prolactin hoga because of increase prolactin aur agar decrease ka puche to gnrh hoga so in do pe focus karne hai अगर ऑप्शन में दोनों हो तो इट इज एक्चुअली डिक्रीज इन जीन आर एच दैट इज इनहेबिटिंग दिलेशन इन फर्दर प्रेगनेंसी तो उसके बाद इंक्रीज इन प्रोडक्टिन लेकिन अगर स्टेम में आपको दिया हो तो इंक्रीज ऑफ फूच ऑफ फॉलोइंग काजेज तो आपने प्रोडक्टिन चूज करना है स्टेम में अगर ये हो डिक्रीज ऑफ फूच ऑफ फॉलोइंग काजेज प्रिवेंट ओलेशन और फर्दर फ्रेगनेंसी तो डिक्रीज इन जीन आर एच अगर स्टेम में इंक्रीज या डिक्रीज ना हो वो चाहे द फॉलोइंग इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर डिक्रीज इन ओलेशन और फर्दर फ्रेगनेंसी तो उसमें जीन आर एच आपने चूज़ करना है इसके लिए एक गाइडन का रेफरेंस मैंने शेयर किया था दूसरा है कि ये तो हो गया ड्यूरिंग लिक्टेशन ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी लिक्टेशन इज इनहेबिटेड इस पर फोकस करनी है दोनों सी क्यूज है से ड्यूरिंग लिक्टेशन प्रेगनेंसी इज इनहेबिटेड ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी लिक्टेशन इज इनहेबिटेड बाई इस्ट्रोजन और प्रोजेस्ट्रोन दोनों हैं इस्ट्रोजन और प्रोजेस्ट्रोन देर कम्बाइंड इफेक्ट causes what uh, inhibit the release of that uh, lactation so in pay focus karni hai so some says uh, it's uh, estrogen in some says it's progesterone but the first aid clearly mention is is progesterone well there are other references which supports estrogen don't know what's what will be the key of cpsp but i think in my opinion you should pick the progesterone because the first aid is a uh, most reliable among all so choose the progesterone choose the progesterone